And so part of my purpose tonight is to give you some feedback about what residents think about the city and what direction they think you're moving. So uh, for those of you, I think most of you are familiar with our firm. Uh, we do work uh, in 46 states across the country, more than 500 cities and counties. Uh, this week I'm making presentations in Colorado, a couple in Texas here and in Florida. And so each, every single day our, uh, our firm is doing a presentation somewhere uh, on community survey data. Uh, what's really nice about coming here tonight is you're really the jewel of most of the presentations I've been able to make. Uh, there's very few cities that have done as well as you've done during these economic times the last couple of years. I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised that not only have you met citizen expectations, you've actually exceeded them in a number of areas and you're now st setting the standard in some of the categories that I consider to be the most important indicators for success. Uh, on this survey. So with that, uh, tonight I'm going to kind of walk through the purpose and methodology. Most of you are familiar with it. It has not changed, but just to kind of refresh uh, your memories about how the survey is done. And then I'm going to hit the bottom line up front so you don't have to wait to slide 842 uh, to get to my conclusions. And then I'm going to kind of walk you through how I got there. And certainly if you have questions as we go, I'll be more than happy uh, to stop and take them. So uh, as far as the purpose, uh, what I found out today from the city manager is the city's actually done a survey like this every year since 1987. In fact, you did another one in 1985. And I don't know of any of the communities where we work that has had such a commitment to getting citizen input for such an extended and consistent a period of time as the city of Auburn. Part of the reason you do that is to assess how well you're delivering services, get feedback with residents about what priorities should be uh, so that you can set budget and make other decisions. And also as part of this survey, we compare how you're doing against other communities. So are you keeping up? Are you doing better? If other folks are getting better, are you too? And how are the, what's the impact of the economy and just general attitudes and perceptions across the country have on perceptions here of the city of Auburn? Uh, as far as the overall methodology, it has not changed. Uh, each year we mail the survey to 1,500 households. Uh, we then do follow-up by phone to try to get as many people to participate as possible. Our goal is always to get at least 600. Uh, this year we had 630 households participate, a little over a 40% response rate, which is a tremendous response rate given the fact the survey takes about 20 minutes. Uh, for people to complete. When you put it in context of voter turnout at local elections and participate in, in the survey, it's a very, very good participation rate. Uh, the per results aren't perfect. Uh, they have a precision of about plus or minus 4% or technically 3.9% at the 95% level of confidence. That essentially means if we did the survey the same way 100 times, 95 times out of 100, you'd expect to get these same results within about 4%. So if you see 50%, probably somewhere between 46 and 50 for. It's not perfect, but it's generally very good uh, for decision-making purposes. As far as our distribution, uh, one of the things that's unique about Auburn is over 60% of the residents are actually under uh, 65 or 25 years old. So we actually track each year the distribution of our sample compared to previous years in the sample as well as to the census. And one of the reasons we do that is we want to make sure from one year to the next we don't get a significantly different composition. In other words, in one year if we had 20% males, the next year we had 80% males, and males think differently than females, the difference in our sample might actually be the reason you see differences in survey results. So by managing it from one year to the next, making sure it's fairly consistent, we can make some interpretation as to whether changes in the survey results are real changes in perceptions or just accidental changes based on sample differences. What I'd like to tell you is the sample this year is very similar to previous years and it's generally very representative. You can see by age, if you want to do different analysis by age of residents, you'll be able to do that with the data. Uh, we've got good representation by race, uh, even compared to the census, even though the Auburn University is a high percentage of the city census population, we've got very good representation for the major ethnic groups. Uh, as far as income, if you want to take a look at some of the services based on how income affects expectations and needs for services, you can look at low income versus upper income, and that's one of the things that I've worked with the staff in previous years when they actually break down the data uh, for specific services and analysis of what those needs are. And then even by uh, gender, we have good distribution. So don't share this with you to bore you, but just want to give you the confidence that if you use it for decision making, it is representative of the community, and it's also similar to what we've had in past years, so the changes you see in this year's survey compared to those previous years are valid uh, uh, changes. 
In addition, we geocode or the home address of respondents each year, and basically these dots on the map show the location of respondents to the survey, uh, and generally the dots, the density of the dots reflects the density of housing in the city, so we feel we have good representation as well. So both demographically, socially, economically, and re with regard to location, we feel you have a very good sample from which to do the assessment uh, of the survey data. So with that said, uh, give you the bottom line, kind of the punchline up front, and then I'll tell you how I got there. Uh, first, the city is clearly moving in the right direction with regard to your residents' expectations. I don't think I've seen another city perform as well the last two years as the city of Auburn. Uh, not only are you moving in the right direction, you're setting the standard in most areas of service delivery, and you're setting the standard when it comes to overall value and overall satisfaction with uh, city services, and I'll show that to you a little bit uh, today as well. Uh, the top priorities for city services have not changed a lot. Traffic flow and maintenance of infrastructure continue to be at the top of the list. But I told your staff today that having traffic flow as an issue is usually a good issue to have if you're a growing community. Of the top 20 performing communities in our database, I think traffic flow issues is the number one priority everywhere. If you're not a desirable community, if you're not growing, you probably don't have people coming there. And so the fact that residents want you to manage that is important, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing a bad job. So with that said, let me kind of walk through uh, the major findings. And the first one is just want to put into context that most residents actually feel very good uh, and have a good perception about the city. In other words, the city of Auburn has what we call a good brand. In other words, when people think of the city of Auburn, they feel good about that. There are some cities where people think about their city, they automatically think negatively about whatever the city does. If they pave a new street, they question why they paved the street and whether it will last. In the city of Auburn, when you do things, most people give you the benefit of the doubt, even if it's wrong, and feel good about the direction the city is moving. And you can see that in a number of areas in the survey. Uh, this first one is some of the strategic indicators that really are signs of the long-term health of a community. We look at the perception of the image, in other words, do people want to be here, they think this is kind of the place to be, uh, quality of life, uh, overall quality of city services, <laughs> appearance, and value for taxes. And what you'll see in a lot of these slides is in most cases blue or positive ratings, indicating that people were satisfied or very satisfied. Red indicate negative ratings or dissatisfaction. The white is an okay rating, it's a neutral. We ask people to rate things on a scale of one to five so they don't say I'm neutral. You know, they just say a three on a, a one to five point scale. So typically people who give a three haven't had a real strong positive or a negative experience. What you'll notice on this chart though is how little negativity there is or how little red. And what really stands out to me the most is if you see the overall value at the bottom, only 5% of the residents in the city were dissatisfied with the value for taxes. And if you combine the satisfied and very satisfied, you have 78% of the population giving positive ratings. And that's the low levels of negativity, I think, are the lowest that I have ever seen. Uh, the overall positives are the second highest I've ever seen. And for me, that's clearly the fundamental indicators. Are you delivering at a good price what people expect? And you're clearly doing it. In fact, if people complain to you that you don't do a good job managing their taxes or, or complain to you about what they're paying, for every person that's dissatisfied, there's actually five people who are very satisfied in this community when you look at the 26 to 5. The other thing that really stands out is the overall quality of city services. Only 4% of residents gave negative ratings for that, while 85% gave positive ratings. And so those are the two indicators I consider to be most important for a city's health, and you're doing a great job in each area. When we just look at general perceptions about is this a place to live, work, and raise children, you'll see, again, very, very strong ratings. What stands out to me on this chart is the intensity of the excellent responses. In other words, a lot of times people will give positive ratings, but people don't usually give that five or that excellent, that most intense positive unless they feel passionately about it. And you can see two out of three residents give intense positive ratings or excellent ratings for as a place to live and to raise children, and almost half rate the city that way to work. I just made a presentation yesterday in another city, and over 50% of the respondents rated their community negatively as a place to work. So clearly, uh, there's the right things are happening here, and people feel good about living here and working here. 
Uh, this next chart is just kind of the major indices uh, that we've been tracking for a number of years. What's listed here are kind of the overall uh, departmental services, and we ask people to rate each of them. I'm not going to go through all of the details for every department right now, but I do want to highlight that when you look overall, there's very little negativity really in any areas. In fact, even for traffic flow, where you have one in five residents or 21% giving negative ratings, you actually have nearly 60% giving positive ratings. So for every one person that's not happy with traffic flow, you actually have almost three that are giving you positive ratings. All the other services really have about 10% or less who are dissatisfied. And you'll notice that for your police, uh, your school system, and your libraries, you have about half or more of the residents giving you a very satisfied response. So you're doing really great in all the major categories that were assessed. So bottom line, when city people think of the city of Auburn, especially the government, they tend to feel very positive about what you're doing. The second thing we want to look at, though, isn't just how well you're doing overall, but whether or not you're doing a good job equitably meeting uh, service delivery. In other words, some communities might get 90% or 80% satisfaction ratings, but they might have a pocket of the city that's completely different than the rest of the city, and then they have some problems just with the delivery by location to different neighborhoods. So one of the things we did in this survey, and I'm not going to go through all the maps today, but we actually shaded each census block uh, group in the city based on the mean rating of responses from those census block groups in one of those colors you see in the legend. If people were dissatisfied, that would have been shaded as a red or an orange. Uh, if they are satisfied, it's a light blue or a dark blue. Uh, this is the best map I've ever seen for the overall delivery of city services in that almost the entire city is in dark blue. I mentioned to staff earlier today that even a city that we did in Florida, Coral Springs, which won the Malcolm Baldridge Award, I think it's the only city to have done that, their map isn't all dark blue like this. And so this is really an accomplishment for just about every census block group in the city to give an average rating that is very satisfied. It's really, uh, really exceptional. I know some people might look at this map and say, well, why are there a couple light blue areas? What's wrong there? Don't, don't look at it that way. This is actually, you know, having blue everywhere is, is a major accomplishment. Most cities are struggling not to have orange and red in certain parts of their city. So, next thing we looked at is just the overall uh, direction. And clearly the city's headed in the right direction when you see the survey results. And this is the exception for the last couple years. In fact, about eight out of 10 presentations I make, the cities have gotten worse than the previous year in the last year or two. And you'll notice here when it comes to overall perceptions, what's in blue here are the positive ratings from this year. Uh, the yellow kind of shows your one year trend. And then the survey we've been using has been pretty much the same for the last five years. So the orange kind of shows you the five year of the long term trend. And you'll notice for all the major areas that are assessed, you see a stair step in the positive direction. When it comes to overall value for taxes, you actually had a significant increase this year over last year. It went up 4% to 78%. Just in the last five years, there's been a 10% increase in the positive ratings for value for taxes. So clearly in these difficult times where most people are feeling more negative about what they're paying in government taxes and fees and generally feeling more uh, distrust about local government and how their dollars are being used, you're going in exactly the opposite direction. And you'll see same thing on your overall quality of city services. We thought that was high when it was at 77% five years ago, and you keep uh, notching it up every year, and you can see you're at 85% uh, this year. When it comes to just perceptions of the community as a place to live, work, and raise children, uh, I was very surprised to see that you're doing a good job on the perceptions of the working uh, ability uh, for residents to get jobs. So you can see that actually went up compared to a year ago. Most communities have seen 10, 15, 20 percent decreases in perceptions of questions related to work in the economy. So you're certainly doing something right to attract business or make people feel that there are going to be jobs here in the future uh, to get these types of ratings. Uh, when you look at the major categories of city services, you'll notice as you look at most of them, the ones that were rated high before, 
you've sustained high ratings. And frankly, there's at certain points diminishing returns, where if you keep spending lots and lots of money, you might get it up to 90% in an area, but the cost of doing that would erode the value. And so you have to kind of balance that. And you've apparently done a very good job because your value ratings keep getting higher. And you notice that the areas where you had the lowest ratings previously is where you've actually seen the biggest improvements. Traffic flow, though not a significant change from a year ago, if you look where it was back in 2006, is up 13 points. And then if you look at code enforcement, maintenance of streets and stormwater, three other areas that we've cited in previous surveys where you've had opportunities for improvement, you've made double digit gains in those. In fact, all three of those areas saw significant increases during the past year. And though communication hasn't seen a big change compared to a year ago, you can see over the five year period it's now up 15 points. So you're doing a better job at engaging the public, keeping them informed about what's going on. And I think that's having a lot of other benefits just in the perception of the city and other areas where citizens encounter city services and deal with city employees. When it comes to the public safety side of the house, again, you'll notice that the blue and yellow bars in most cases are significantly higher uh, than the orange bar. Uh, you'll know one concern five years ago was the enforcement of speed limits in neighborhoods. And even though it, there's really not a significant change from a year ago, you see the five-year trend. You've made dramatic changes or dramatic improvements in the perceptions of how well you're enforcing that. And then during the past year, we saw significant improvements in ratings for a local ambulance service. Uh, crime prevention, uh, visibility police and retail areas, and also animal control. And all in all, you can see public safety services are rating very, very high. And again, what I like is many of the areas that were rated less than 60% five years ago, those are the areas you've made the biggest improvement. And you've sustained the areas that were rated very high in the first place. So you've done a great job targeting your resources, targeting your communication, and targeting your efforts in the areas that had the most opportunity uh, to do better. Uh, when it comes to perceptions of safety, uh, you can see that residents feel safe. Again, thought they felt safe five years ago, but during the last year you've made the community feel even safer. Uh, parks are one of the biggest indicators of overall health of a community. In, in most communities, it's not uncommon, particularly growing communities or communities where there's universities, sometimes they have concerns about safety in city parks. And you can see we had two out of three residents give positive ratings in 2006 when 66% uh, gave positive ratings. It's now up to three out of four just in the last uh, five years. And you can see all the other items have generally gotten a little better uh, compared to the previous year's ratings. Code enforcement was one of the areas that was cited as a significant opportunity for improvement a couple years ago in the survey. Uh, the city certainly uh, addressed that, uh, whether through communication or the way that you've dealt with new development or the way that you've enforced current regulations. Uh, I'm not sure what you have done, but I'm actually telling other communities they should come and take a look at what Auburn's doing because of the dramatic improvements in code enforcement. Uh, you'll see especially when it comes to unrelated occupancy regulations, that's gone from 35% giving positive ratings or just one in three people five years ago to over half giving positive ratings now. Uh, you can see zoning regulations are up 18%. Uh, from 2005, 2006, and you can see your enforcement of building codes are also up significantly from both a year ago and from five years ago. And then, then simple things such as cleaning up debris and litter, which I guess isn't necessarily simple, but the way that you follow up and enforce that, it stayed the same compared to a year ago, but your long-term trend really shows the city has addressed that issue in a very favorable uh, way. And when it comes to your solid waste, environmental, and utility services, those have historically always rated well. Uh, last year, I came in in one of the areas that we had seen a decrease from the previous year was curbside recycling. You can see that that's rebounded. It was up five points this year. Yard waste was also up significantly this year. The only area that we really saw a significant decrease on the survey actually was water revenue office customer service was down four points. It's still higher than it was in 2006, but that's certainly something to watch. Uh, in the years ahead to make sure that that continues uh, to stay where it's at or rebounds to where it was before. I like that your residential uh, garbage collection, 91% give positive ratings, just a phenomenal accomplishment. To think that's not in the not remaining 9%, most of that's neutral. So think, uh, you know, there's typically like 5 or 10% of the public that tends to be cranky about things. So for you to get nine, 91 out of 100 people to give you positive ratings, you're doing something right in that area. 
And then when it comes to maintenance, overall most of the maintenance ratings did not change significantly from a year ago. But the one item, if you come from the second to the bottom, uh, maintenance of streets, that's kind of been one of the top priorities for several years. You'll see you moved up a little bit from last year, and over the past five years, you've actually seen a 10% increase. Street lighting dropped a little bit, and you can see a couple other items kind of went up or dropped, but most of the changes right now, at least from my perspective, aren't statistically significant. If you see them drop further next year, uh, likely to be a greater concern, but right now, I think you've got your resources fairly well allocated uh, in this area. And then with all of the progress that you've seen, this chart shouldn't surprise you, and frankly, uh, it's just incredible, uh, the progress that the city's made. Because when I was here in 2006, actually I told you at that time that the city leadership ratings were actually very high. If you got the leadership ratings now that you got then, you'd probably be disappointed. But you can take a look at the results. It's really phenomenal. Uh, and I think what's happened is the people in this city are looking at what's going on around the rest of the country. And then they're looking here, and they're seeing their city move in the right direction when everybody else seems to be moving in the wrong direction. And they're really proud of the leadership that they have and seeing the outcomes that are occurring in the community because of that leadership. In fact, you can see that overall satisfaction with elected officials is up 13 points. Uh, just compared to a year ago, it's up 9 percentage points where almost eight out of 10 people are giving positive ratings. Perceptions of city manager are equally impressive as far as the gains. And you can see even your appointed boards have gone from 59 to 73%. So clearly, I think a lot of the factors that you see in the survey with so many things going in the right direction, uh, having dividends in the perceptions of the leadership. On your parks and recreation, uh, you can see much like many of the previous slides, uh, you see really a kind of a stair step. If you go back to 2006 in a number of the areas, your pools have gone up 10%. Uh, walking trails kind of rebounded from a slight decrease last year. Number of parks are up 6%, and you can see maintenance of cemeteries are also up. Most of the other items didn't really see significant changes uh, compared to a year ago. And then the last one is communication, and I found that cities that emphasize communication when times are tough, especially when you don't have the resources that you may have used to had, and you've got to make tough decisions. If you engage the public in the process for the decisions, and you keep them informed about why you're making the decisions, you tend to see positive results. And it also translates into your leadership ratings. The one on here that I was most impressed with is the level of public involvement in decision making. That's up 14 points from 2006. You may say, well, that's not a big deal. I don't think I've seen another community improve that much in that area in such a short period of time. And the reason for that is that's kind of a nebulous term. What does public involvement mean? It's something that people tend to generally rate low. In other words, people tend to be critical of public involvement. There's never enough of it. Yet you've gone up just from a year ago up eight points, and you're up 14 points over the last five years. So clearly moving in the right direction there as well. So bottom line, the city is clearly on the right course. And because you've been moving in the positive direction, while the rest of the country has been going in the negative direction, you're now actually setting the standard for service delivery in lots of areas. And that's what you're going to see on the next couple charts. This first one shows you kind of where you stack up for major categories of city services. And you'll notice that for every major category, even traffic flow, which is where you have the most dissatisfaction, uh, you're above average. And if I just compared you to other high-performing growth communities, you'd actually be significantly above that average as well. But you'll notice here that your infrastructure, street maintenance, and facilities, you're 24 points above the national average. I mean, 70% is a phenomenal rating in that category. When it comes to communication, you're 29 points above the national average. And customer service, just the culture of your employees and the way they interact and respond to residents, 23 points above the national average. So you know, you look at the blue bar compared to that kind of reddish bar, and it clearly shows that you're setting the standard in most areas. Uh, and the other thing I might highlight, too, is code enforcement. A few years ago, you were actually below average uh, or right around average in code enforcement. And this next chart, what this shows you is how you stack up to a peer group of about 30 other cities. Uh, what we do is we do a national survey each year, and that's what you see on this chart. 
Whereas this one, what it shows you is the blue uh, bar shows you the worst performing city in the database that you're benchmarked against to the very best city. The orange dot is where Auburn ranks, and that vertical line is the average. And you'll notice that you're significantly above average in most areas. But what stood out to me the most was the code enforcement issue. If you go back a few years in your reports, you'll see that dot used to be more in the middle. And now you're one of the very best performing uh, cities in that regard. Your communication is the same way. You've seen double digit improvements in your communication ratings. You have one of the very best rated communication, as well as your customer service at 79%. That's one of the very best scores uh, that we have in our database. And when you look at some of the perceptions that really indicate the health of a community, you'll notice here the, the two that I consider the most important indicators on this survey for a city government's health are the third one, overall quality of city services, and the fifth one, value for city taxes, dollars, and fees. And you're a phenomenal 33% above the national average when it comes to taxes and fees of value. I mean, it is truly incredible. And as you saw early on, only 5% of the residents give negative ratings. So not only are you doing a good job making sure services are delivered well, you're being frugal to make sure that taxes and fees and things like that stay at a reasonable level. So you're balancing that probably better than any city I've seen uh, recently. And certainly you're the second best, if you look at this next chart, at 78%. You're the, se very, the second highest in our database, clearly the highest in the last year that our database runs for the last couple years. And so doing a great job in that arena. When it comes to just ratings of the city as a place to live, work, and raise children, uh, you've always been high in the live and raise children department. You'll now notice that as a place to work, you're 28% above the national average. You've gone up, while most places have dropped significantly uh, in that area this year. Uh, public safety, uh, every single area in public safety was at or above the national average. You can see police protection ranks 14 points above the national average, and so does your crime prevention. And then you see some of the other items, you have most of them are double digits uh, above the national average in just about every area of public safety. <laughs> and when you look at safety perceptions in city parks and neighborhoods at night and downtown, uh, people here feel much safer than other communities. You might say, well, we don't rank a lot higher in the neighborhood. Frankly, when cities get into the 80s and neighborhood safety, they usually have some significant problems. So that 92, there's not a lot of variation around the 92%. So the fact that you're at 95%, there's a certain percentage of the public that just never gives fours and fives, and you're pretty much about as high as you get there. Uh, when it comes to leadership, uh, these ratings, uh, are, would be coveted, I would think, by just about any city council or commission uh, that I would visit. Uh, to be not just 5% or 10%, but to be a full 23 points above the national average when it comes to leadership, 22% uh, above the national average in your city management, and 21% on your boards and commissions really shows that you've done a great job managing resources, uh, casting a vision, and leading the city in the direction residents uh, want you to go. And you can see that in this chart, where you're basically right near the very top uh, of the benchmark cities in our database in every single one of those areas uh, that was assessed. And then the last couple things are in maintenance. Uh, you can see that overall maintenance of street signs and street lighting are the two that are about average. But you can see you really stand out when it comes to maintenance of sidewalks, mowing and trimming on streets and public areas, and the overall cleanliness of streets and public areas. Each of those is more than 10% above the national average. Your parks and recreation system is also above the national average in most areas with kind of one exception. And this is really one of the only places on the survey where you're significantly below. And that has to do with community recreation centers. Uh, the average is 72%. Uh, you're at 58%. But all other areas uh, are significantly, uh, or most uh, all the other areas are significantly higher. And when it comes to code enforcement, this is an area used to be at average or slightly below average, actually, in a couple of the areas we used to rate. Uh, you're now setting the standard in the two major areas that we compare you to on code enforcement to other communities. And you can see you're now right at the very top in both the enforcement of sign regulation and also how well you clean up or enforce uh, rules and regulations related to the cleanup of debris and litter in neighborhoods. In fact, you're the second highest rated at 76% uh, compared to 77% uh, uh, at the highest. 
And then finally, communication. Uh, each area of communication, you're significantly above the national average, but I do want to emphasize one more time the level of public involvement and decision making. You know, when I was here uh, five years ago, you were at around 43% in that regard, which is about average. Uh, you're now up to 57%. So whatever you have done the last few years to engage residents, keep them informed, and make them feel like they're part of the process is really a model uh, that other communities should be taking a look at because during this period most communities are seeing significant decreases in most areas of communication. Most communities residents are upset that wire service is being cut and they're not part of those decisions. I know you haven't been flush with lots and lots of cash but somehow you're making decisions and residents are feeling good about the decisions you're making with those limited resources. And you can see as well on your utility and environmental services, each of those areas was significantly above the national average. And really hats off on your garbage collection service. Anytime you get above 90% in something, that's just really a phenomenal uh, accomplishment. And yard waste, you can see the gap's actually bigger. It's harder to do well in yard waste, but you're at 87%, almost as high. And you can see the average for that is just 70%. So that's kind of where you're at as far as ratings. I know one of the things that you use the survey for is to kind of guide where you're going to be going and to at least have some input as to what uh, the priorities for the community are. So one of the things we do is we do important satisfaction analysis to kind of identify, you know, not only how well you're delivering services, but how important are those services to residents. You know, in other words, if 100% of the residents were dissatisfied with something, but nobody cared about it, if you spent millions of dollars, it might not change your overall satisfaction rating because nobody cares. So what we want to try to do is balance the two, and we have a couple different ways to do it. One of it is called the important satisfaction rating, and that's really for left brain learners that want lists of things from first to last. And what we do is we take the importance rating times one minus the satisfaction rating. So as satisfaction goes to 100%, this goes down. You know, as importance goes to zero, the rating goes down. And in this case, you can see traffic flow and maintenance of streets and facilities are the two highest rated areas. And what this means is these are the two things that are probably going to have the biggest impact on residents' perceptions of the city. Doesn't mean you have to go out and spend millions and millions of dollars here, but make sure you're talking about these and addressing these issues so that residents know that you're connected and thinking about these issues as you're making decisions. And if you're a right brain learner, these charts basically show the same information. As you go to left to right, the items on the right are more important. And as you go from the bottom to top, the items on the top, there are higher levels of satisfaction. And the areas that we have the greatest concern about are those that are in the bottom right quadrant. Those are things where the satisfaction levels are lower, but the importance is high. And you can see street uh, maintenance uh, facilities, and then also traffic flow are also in the bottom right quadrant there. On public safety, uh, you've moved the enforcement of speed limits in neighborhoods down from a very high priority a few years ago where its rating was above 0.2. Now it's almost in the medium priority category, and that essentially means you have your resources pretty well aligned with residents' expectations when everything's in the medium priority category. And when you look at it in the matrix, you can see that enforcement of speed limits is in the farthest to the bottom right, but overall you have your resources pretty well aligned in most areas of public safety. And you can see on code enforcement, uh, technically these were flagged as your medium or high priorities, but all in all, the 0 .10, for the most part, these are uh, pretty well aligned. And when you look at the overall IS matrix, you can see zoning regulations and issues related to erosion and sediment control are the two issues that you may not have major problems right now, but being prepared to address them, those are potentially your leading indicators for future dissatisfaction if you don't plan to address things that are in the bottom right quadrant. And on utility and environmental services, you really didn't have anything that was identified as a high priority. Curbside recycling services had the highest IS rating, so among those services, that's one that's going to be, uh, residents are going to be most sensitive to. So improvements or reductions in perceived quality in curbside recycling are likely to have the biggest overall uh, impact on overall satisfaction with the city. And then you can see maintenance, continued maintenance of city streets, 
rated at the top of the list, and it's also, you can see in the bottom right-hand quadrant. But pay attention to the fact that sidewalks and city street lighting are also there. Those, that, them being in that quadrant, even though the ratings are a little lower right now, those could be leading causes of future dissatisfaction if you're not planning ahead to address what could be growing dissatisfaction in future years in those areas. So right now your resources are very well aligned, but if you look at those items in the bottom right, those could be contributors to problems in the future if you don't plan to address them you know, now and have uh, plans ready to meet it, rising expectations. And you can see in Parks and Recreation, no items were identified as high priorities, but the items that kind of stand out as future indicators or things to be watching are walking trails, community recreation centers, and biking lanes and paths. Those are the things to pay attention to as you move forward to make sure dissatisfaction does not increase uh, significantly. Last thing I'll share with you are just some specialized questions that we asked just this year, or sometimes we've asked them in previous years, but they are about issues that are unique to Auburn. Uh, one of which is where residents think they should, you should concentrate efforts in what kind of different areas. And we have residents kind of rate the overall priority that should be placed on different things. And you can see 56% of the residents thought it was a high priority for the city school system. Traffic management was next, followed by police protection. Police protection is usually the second. Uh, but in your case, I think the high levels of safety are the reason it's a third. It's not unusual to see schools rated among the very top of a list like this, but clearly it has the highest priority overall. And we asked residents how supportive they'd be of an increase in taxes or fees uh, to fund the future expansion of the Auburn uh, City School System. And you can see 64% said they'd be very or somewhat supportive. Uh, just 13%, or I guess 23% altogether said they'd be opposed to that. Wouldn't run off to an election tomorrow. This isn't that specific of a question, but it does show that residents are willing uh, to pay some sort of increases. And as a follow-up to this, we asked them what kind of options they were most supportive of. And you can see business license fees, property taxes amazingly had 53% of the people uh, who were supportive. Uh, said that they were willing uh, to consider property taxes. So you can see 44% said sales taxes, and then 41% said occupational license fees. So there probably are some opportunities, but clearly the threshold, the amount, all those kinds of things ultimately impact your ability to be successful. But I would say based on this and the high percentage that pick property taxes, that potentially could be an option for you to at least consider. The other thing we asked is whether or not the city's efforts to pursue commercial and industrial projects in the city, you know, how that should change. And you can see almost half of the respondents, both this year and last year, said it should be increased. Only 8% uh, said it should be reduced. So you may have people come in and tell you not to do that and to do it less. But the bottom line is right now, uh, stay the same course or actually increased is the preferred direction for the city uh, when it comes to uh, this issue. Last couple things we asked had to do with the priority of specific types of projects. And we asked residents to rate a number of them on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, and you can see that the percentage that picked the items is a 1, 2, or 3, which are the highest priorities. Road resurfacing, downtown parking, and police protection and facilities were statistically about the same. They all had more than 50% of the people identifying them as a high priority, followed by fire, and then your recycling uh, program and facilities. And then the last question that we've asked many years, and it may be because you won a national championship this year, uh, you'll notice that the impact that Auburn University students have had on people's neighborhood, uh, it went up uh, seven points as far as the percent that gave positive ratings from 32 last year uh, to 39 this year. So all in all, very few say negative, or at least it's a small percentage of residents that think it has a negative impact on the community. So just to conclude, these are the same bullets I shared with you at the very beginning. Uh, uh, it's very, uh, I guess, rewarding for me to be able to come and give news that's positive. Uh, normally, I'm not able to do that. Uh, this city is clearly moving in the right direction. You can see that by the positive increases, really, in just about all the areas that were rated both last year and this year. Uh, and now, because you've been making progress in a period when so many other communities have not done so well, you really are setting the standard in so many ways. But I think you should be most proud of the fact that you're really setting the standard when it comes to value for taxes, because I think that's really critical, because not only are you delivering good services, you're doing it in an affordable way. And the priorities, Continue using the IS, and that'll help guide uh, your investments and allocation of resources based on what citizen expectations are.